good morning to all my ninth class students how are you doing i hope you all are doing well you all are fit fine and healthy with that i know that you all are studying at home with this i mr pali aware welcomes you all for this today's session of subject science today we are going to learn about one of the chapter from the biology that is fundamental unit of life <clears throat> in this chapter you will be able to understand the concepts like cell definition of a cell discovery of cell parts of cell shape and size of cell types of cell structure of cell then cell organelles and the difference between the animal cell and the plant cell now before starting directly first we'll understand the meaning of the chapter the name of the chapter is the fundamental unit of life let us understand the meaning of each and every word what is the meaning of fundamental hmm? to understand the meaning of word fundamental let us consider example of a pizza i know that you all love pizzas to eat right can you tell me which things are required to make a pizza yes so we need a pizza base then we need some toppings then we need cheese as well as we needs a pizza sauce so these things are required to make a pizza now if i will tell you to make a pizza without base are you able to make it so obviously you can't make pizza without a base we make a pizza on the base so base is very important it is very significant it plays a very significant role on that we keep vegetables or the toppings on that we keep the cheese and then a pizza is formed so without base you cannot form a pizza so we can say fundamental as a necessary base right now let us understand the meaning of word unit for that consider a pearl necklace now this pearl necklace is made up of many pearls if you will consider a single pearl it shows a completeness in itself it has its own structure and shape it is complete in itself we cannot say that the pearl is not having any importance unless and until we cannot form a pearl necklace out of it so pearl is acting as a single and complete unit we can also say that pearl is a part of a necklace and the meaning of life that we all know right so we can say a base which is a part of a one 
larger thing and on which the life is built and that is known as the cell we all human beings or all the living organisms which are present all are made up of this fundamental unit of life that is the cell let us consider one more concept to understand the meaning of this chapter so house it contains many rooms like the living room dining room bedroom yes kitchen and so on so rooms together they form a house then each room is made up of walls right these walls are acting as in compartments and each wall is made up of a brick so brick is a smaller unit of a larger part which is house let us consider one more example that is the human you can consider any other living organism human is made up of many organs there are many organs with which the human is made up of and these organs they are formed due to the tissues and cells tissues are made up of the cells so here the cell is the basic unit of a larger part which is human which is playing a most important role so we can say every living thing which is present is made up of the cell cell makes the life right now there are many scientists who discovered the cell so let us see the concept of cell in detail in this chapter discovery of cell first discovered by the robert hook in 1665 while examining a thin slice of cork cork it can be obtained from a bark of a tree and robert hook observed that the structure of the cork when it is observed under the simple microscope it looks like this and he also says that this structure resembled to the structure of the honeycomb consisting of many compartments and these compartments are very little can you see her these are the compartments hmm? little compartments the cork under the microscope looks like this if you will observe here the compartments there is nothing present inside that cell because these are the dead cells so robert hook then called these compartments as a cell the cell it is a word which is derived from a latin word and the meaning of that is a little room now this discovery of the cell it is very important in the history of science this was the first time that someone had observed that living things appear to consist of separate units 
and the use of the word cell to describe these units is being used till this date in biology. With this, there are many scientists who discovered the cell. So already we know that cell was first discovered by the Robert Hooke in 1665. As he has observed the cell in a cork slice with the help of a simple microscope. Then, Leeuwenhoek in 1674, with the improved microscope, he discovered the free living cell in the pond for the first time. And that is the living cell. The cell which was discovered by Robert Hooke, that was the dead cell. So this was the living cell which was discovered by Leeuwenhoek in 1674. Then Robert Brown in 1831 discovered the nucleus in the cell. Then Parkinje in 1839 he coined the term that is protoplasm for the fluid substance of the cell. As these cells all are the living cells, there is a substance which is present inside the cell and that was coined as the protoplasm by the scientist. With this, there are some cell theories which was presented by two biologists, Shilden and Schwann. Shilden in 1838 and by Schwann in 1839. The cells theory says that all the plants and animals are composed of cells and that the cell is the basic unit of life. On that basic unit of life, everything can be built. Like as we have seen that we can make a house with the help of the brick. So brick is acting as a basic unit for the house. Then these, the cell theory was further expanded by Varko in <clears throat> 1855 by suggesting that all cells arise from pre-existing cells. Now what is the meaning of pre-existing cells? Hmm? So for that, let us consider one example. Let us consider one example. Like consider a multicellular organism as a human. So every multicellular organism that has come from a single cell. How? Because the cells divide to produce the cells of their own kind. And therefore we say that all cells thus come from pre-existing cells. Now, let's understand what are the living organisms made up of. All living organisms, how they are made up of. For that, let us consider a short activity. Let us take a small piece of an onion bulb. With the help of a pair of forceps, we can peel off the skin that is also known as the epidermis. Then this layer can be put immediately in a watch glass containing water. This will prevent the pill from drying and getting folded. Now let us take a glass slide. If you will observe here, 
we have taken a glass slide this is a rectangular in shape that is a glass slide which is very thin on that put a drop of water at the center of a slide this may contain a stain to make this specimen more clear we can use a stain as a iodine also then cut some onion by using the forcep peel off the inside layer of the onion and place your onion skin onto the water droplet on your slide so here we have placed it right now using a mounted needle lower a cover slip cover slip is also a, a very thin glass onto the onion skin and take care that avoid the air bubbles while putting the cover slip with the help of this mounted needle do this slowly and carefully and observe this light this is also known as a temporary mount of onion peel under a high power of a compound microscope why to use a microscope because microscope enlarge the things what do you observe as we look through the lenses so you will observe the cells of an onion pill like this here which is shown in this picture again you observe some compartments yes they are similar to this honeycomb structure somewhat hmm? then which has the nucleus and there is a some substance present between the nucleus and this boundary hmm? that is known as the cytoplasm so we can conclude that onion bulbs of different sizes though will take different sizes of onions this we have observed for a one onion then you can choose a variety of onion in sizes hmm? then though you will observe the onion bulbs or though you are taking the onion bulbs of different sizes they have the similar small structure which is visible under a microscope so we can say that the cells of the onion pill will all look the same regardless of the size of the onion they came from these small structures that we are the basic building units of the onion bulb and these structures are called cells not only the onions but all the organisms that we observe around are made up of cells however there are also single cells that live on their own in this way we can classify the organisms based on the number of cells of which they are made up of we can classify the organisms in two types unicellular and multicellular organisms unicellular means single celled organisms the meaning of uni is single and cellular means cell so single cell organism and we can also classify the organisms as multicellular organisms 
multi means many that means the organism which is made up of many cells is known as multicellular organism for example the amoeba bacteria paramecium these are the organisms and these are called as the unicellular organisms and we are able to see them we are able to discover this microscopic world because of the invention of magnifying lens hence we can see this microorganisms whereas multicellular organisms which includes all the plants and animals so we can say every multicellular organism has come from a single cell and hence we again say that all cells they come from the pre-existing cells now let us consider various cells from the human body as you know that human body is a multi is made up of multiple cells hmm? many cells form together a human body the organisms have the cells which are of different kinds different types of cells are there which are present in the human body some of the cells are the red blood cells hmm? ovum cell nerve cell sperm cell bone cell smooth muscle cells columnar epithelial cells so these cells are different in shape and size right and these shapes and size of these cells are related to the specific functions they perform like we have seen in the unicellular organisms like amoeba it can change its shape the shape is not fixed in some cases the cell shape could be more or less fixed and peculiar for a particular types of cells for example if you will observe the nerve cell it has a typical shape if you will observe the bone cells if you will observe the smooth muscle cells they have a particular peculiar type of shape each living cell has the tendency to perform certain basic functions that are characteristic of all the living organisms then how does a living cell perform these basic functions now there comes a role that is a division of labor if you will consider a multicellular organisms which is made up of many types of cells each cell is having its own function this means that different parts of the human body perform different functions for example these muscle cells they help for the movement of the body parts the human body it has the heart it is to pump the blood a stomach is there to digest the food right similarly division of labor is also seen in a single cell though some of the organisms like amoeba which is made up of a single cell but that single cell is performing multiple functions for example consider amoeba it can catch the food by changing its shape by creating a finger like projections right so that single cell is performing the work of catching the food digestion of the food and many more things so we can say that 
each such cell in fact has got certain specific components within it and that is known as the cell organelles each kind of cell organelle performs a special function such as making new material in the cell clearing up the waste material from the cell and so on a cell is able to live and perform all its functions because of these organelles these organelles together constitute the basic unit called the cell it is the interesting that all cells are found to have same organelles no matter what their function is or what organism they are found in so we can say that a cell has a special components in it and that is called as the organelles with this here we'll stop for the today's session before that we'll recall some things like the cell was first discovered by the robert hook when he observed a thin slice of cork under a simple microscope then he called each compartment of this cork as a cell we can also say cell as a little room and which plays a very significant role in today's world everything which is present in our surrounding is made up of the cell the living things which includes the plants and animals the size of cell is very small that we cannot observe them with our naked eyes we need a microscope to observe the cell and we all are lucky that due to the invention of the magnifying lenses we are able to observe these microscopic worlds then if we'll consider any particular organism then that organism is going to be made of the same cells for example we have considered onion consider different shapes of shapes and sizes of onion that doesn't matter all the onions they are made up of the same kinds of cells only then we have seen we can classify the organisms depending on the number of cells of which they are made up of in this way we classify the organisms into unicellular and multicellular organisms then the multicellular organisms they have different cells which differ in shape and size and that can be related to the specific function they perform so here we'll stop for the today's session if you have any doubts and queries just write it in the feedback column i'll get back to you soon thank you until that stay safe and stay healthy and keep learning and enjoy learning at home